Welcome everyone, this is your demonstration on how to get started on your expressionistic painting. Expressionism is the project, right? Focusing on artwork by Basquiat, Jean-Michel Basquiat, and the ability to allow marks to speak for themselves. As I mentioned on that entry portion, introduction to the project, that Art is often, art is often the uh, a way to express thoughts and ideas that are really hard to explain in any other language, right? So it's a powerful language, art itself, um, that, that gives us the ability to do so. So we're going to be exploring mark making and how that can potentially lead to some solid artwork so all of you should have grabbed a canvas board those are um, located in the school lobby along with the art kit in your art kit you should have received a couple of paint brushes potentially a couple small ones like this you should receive some watercolor which I have out so I'm gonna ask you to have everything out that you're probably gonna be using and you know, everything from watercolors some paints whatever brushes you can get a hold of, uh, a cup of water, some charcoal right here, well, actually some, some chalk, some sidewalk chalk that I found, all of your acrylic paints. I don't know if you received this type, um, which are brick, uh, brick acrylic, or the ones that I poured myself. Um, if you have any other supplies like color pencils, markers, um, regular pencils, you're gonna need all of your supplies essentially. Sharpen, why not? Uh, I have a charcoal pencil floating around in my classroom, so I'm gonna use that. If you don't have it, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. But I also want you to explore other possibilities. Again, this is all mark making and experimentation. So I went outside and I found some pine needles. I also found a pine cone. All right, so the goal here is to explore the space and try all sorts of things out. Um, let's give it a shot. Be the steps it says to get everything ready, have your board, make sure you have a clean space to work in, whether it be in, on, in your uh, kitchen floor, on the kitchen table, or you can lay out some newspaper or something else to protect the space that you're working on. You could uh, rip out some pages out of the sketchbook just to create a space. You can mask tape them all um, on the table and then put your board on top. Prepare your area so you're ready to work. Another possibility is to have a wet rag next to you uh, like just a wet towel or a wet paper towel. Wet paper towel is really, really important. So I'm gonna go, go ahead and grab that. You gotta be ready. Um, next step is to just go ahead and jump in. You cannot have a plan for this project. Uh, we're gonna do away with plans. We're actually gonna do away with some successful processes, but you should have watched the Jesse Reno video by now. The goal is to create, create, create. Um, but here we go. First thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab a pencil and I'm gonna go ahead and draw. Just do a random shape. Add to it. So next step is to back away and think for 10 seconds and say, okay, I see you lines. I'm gonna add a couple more. Bam, okay, I see this, add a couple more. I'm gonna go ahead it started off painting. Before I begin with acrylics, I'm gonna begin with watercolor. Watercolor kits only come with red, yellow, and blue. The reason why there's two yellows is one to mix your greens with and the other one to mix your oranges with. The last thing you wanna do is mix all three together unless you really want the brown. Um, there is a brown pre-made for you. Actually, no, it's burgundy. Magenta. All right, all right, I wasn't expecting magenta. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to it, see what I get. Add a lot of blue to it, see what I get. Ooh, I like that. And add a little bit of purple to it too. All right, and I'm ready to roll. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just splash some of that color in there. Not really thinking about it.
our next thing. My instructions are asking you to not paint anything recognizable. So if th something begins to look a little too recognizable to you, what I need you to do is get rid of that. So if this looks like a dandelion to you, what can you do? to do away with that. We'll go ahead and let this dry after a couple more marks, actually. I'm gonna add yellow, maybe. Notice how I'm using the lid as a paint tray. If it gets too crazy, go ahead and wash it off and start over again. So what I need you to do is just pause, think about it, react. Pause, look at it, react. You're concerned about what it looks like to begin with. You gotta realize that uh, you got a Mr. Martinez here to help you. So you can always, uh, you know, try to reach out to him. He'll help you out as, as soon as he can. Uh, the other possibility is that uh, you look online for inspiration, see what other people are doing when it comes to this type of art. You just have to Google the right words. Everything from expressionistic art, oppression, expressionism, art, or you could Google Neo, N-E-O expressionism, which means new. So like maybe something more so done recently. Um, so I've already mentioned this before. If you're watercoloring and you don't like something, make sure you have a wet rag next to you. And what you could do is typically wipe away something before it gets absorbed into the, the uh, material that you're painting, on, especially paper. You gotta have that wet rag right next to you because if you wait more than 30 seconds, that paper is gonna absorb what you're doing and it's too late. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry and while it dries, I'm gonna start mixing in some acrylic paint. So these that pierce for a minute. You should only have red, yellow, blue, black and white. Painting can be really messy. What I need you to do is be ready with a wet rag just in case you get some paint on something that shouldn't have paint on it. If it gets on your clothes, you get to it right away, immediately, you can wash it off. Okay, you should be able to take your sweatshirt off and just rinse it under the sink. Don't try to dry it or wipe it with a dry rag. Because what that'll do is it'll dry the paint and then it's permanent try to rinse it under the sink with a little bit of soapy water, rinse, rinse, rinse until it's gone, that's a better option. Um, if you don't have that and it dries out, let's say you didn't see that you had black paint on your sleeve, right? What I recommend is you let it dry. If you let it dry before you try rubbing with a wet dry paper towel, it's gonna stay on the surface part of the fabric instead of embedded in the fabric. Then what you can do, get a hold of some rubbing alcohol, uh, isopropyl alcohol, ethyl alcohol, any of those. And what you can do is spray some of that alcohol directly onto the paint. 
now that's dry, you pour it on there, and then you take the fabric onto itself and you start scrubbing it like this. What that's gonna do is it releases, it dissolves the, the acrylic to a certain extent. So it's gonna like let go a little bit, and then you can, once you scrub it enough, pour a little bit more of an alcohol, rub it a little bit more, throw it in the wash, and it should wash off entirely. The only thing that doesn't wash off super great, unless you catch it right away, is red. Red has a dye in it that seems to kind of stick to the material, especially if it's white material. So just be really careful. Roll up your sleeves all the way up. Wear an apron if you have it. Mandil. Es de la casa. Um, it's not about looks. It's not about style. It's about protecting your nice clothes. All right. Stay away from your artwork, too. Just paint away from your body. All right. So now that I've kind of started in one layer, um, I'm going to carry on the same with the same thing. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and take this black paint. And I'm going to go ahead and engage with my painting. By painting. Be careful not to really read into it. Sometimes what you're painting may look like a bird, like right here, squawk, squawk, right? Um, it may look like a penguin, it may look like a cat, it may look like a flower. Um, right now is not, the job is not to create something like that you visually recognize. It's just to play with paint, kind of like we did with the composition uh, activity with the nine different rectangles where you were supposed to paint and watercolor creating different compositions. That's not your plan right now. Your only goal should be to investigate your space as is. I know by now Jesse Reno had probably painted that recognizable face. If you don't know who I'm talking about, shows that you haven't done day one and day two activities. Make sure you go to day two and try to figure out what we're doing in this class when it comes to composition. All of a sudden, as I was mixing color, I was hit with a desire to make something that was kind of a brick red. And you're look, listening for intuition. As I'm mixing, sorry, I can see my pink there. As I was playing with red, I was reminded of brick red. Maybe it was just this idea that like this teal and a brick red would look really nice together. In your description of how you're supposed to go through this process, you're actually supposed to go to coolers, C O O L O R S dot C O dot co, not com dot co, and you're supposed to shop around for some color schemes, meaning what colors go together and what doesn't. Pretty much the color I wanted. Maybe I'll add a little bit more red. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just responding to color. This is what you're supposed to do. Over and over again. I'm gonna go back. Actually, I'm going to go to charcoal now. And I'm going to draw a little bit more.
I don't know what what I was doing there. It's all just response. Excuse me. All right, so the following step here, eventually it says that it's time to obliterate. Obliterate means take the white paint that I've given you that I've provided and you look and say, okay, I really like this section here and I really like whatever's going on here. What I need you to do is obliterate things that have already been going on by taking white paint. You might wanna let your paint dry. You're gonna take white paint. You're gonna obliterate things that you don't like so much. Don't paint the whole board white. You are exploring as you're painting with white paint, as you're doing away with certain sections of your painting, you're exploring what happens as you mix those things. What happens with the layers? What happens with the previous colors? Art can be a messy experience. But the idea here is just to see what happens. Ooh, I kind of like that guy, so I'm gonna keep that guy. You're worried about how it looks right now. If someone in your living room is saying, oh, like, guess this one, what the heck is that? Tell them that art is not about the product, it's about the process, and right now, you're investigating space and allowing the paint to be paint. Paint isn't a tree, paint isn't a bird. Paint is just this material that you use to express yourself. Whether it be trying to tell people that a bird is a bird, or you're trying to tell people that paint is paint. Why does it matter? Take it from me. I went to art school for five and a half years. Been painting and drawing for at least 35 of my years of my life. Um, I surround myself with artists all the time. I guarantee you right now that the process that you're engaging in today with this is far more artistic than trying to draw something that's been drawn a million times. Um, each one of your marks that you are creating is uniquely, distinctly um, responding to your own intuition, an intuition that doesn't exist in anybody else. So even if they have, we have 100 students in this class, which we don't, but if we have 50 students in this class, let's say 50, um, not a single painting will turn out the same because your marks are distinctly yours. It's your self-conscious making these decisions. So it's pretty a pretty dope idea if you think about it. Um, in fact, you're doing this, not to make Mr. Martinez happy, but just to make your mind happy, you're exploring some possibilities. Anyways, that's all the time we have today. Oops, I just dribbled. Before we go, I would also like you to explore crazy materials. So if you do find a pine cone, or if you do have some lipstick, or you, if you do find you know, an old shoelace, see what those things do. Right now, it's all exploration. I kind of like that texture. I'm gonna use the backside, see what it does. the brush Ooh, that kind of scratched into the previous layer I like that a lot I did say string right Let's see what a string would do so I found a string kind of floating around I'm gonna take red okay this is gonna get messy and I hope I don't get it in my, in my sweatshirt so I just took string All right, all right. I think that would have worked out better if I had more paint on the, the thing. Not that it wasn't successful, is that there might be a better way. Oh, whoops, there's a tree branch, twig. All right, all right. I kind of like that. Oh, 
Oh, you don't have paintbrushes? I shouldn't stop you. I forgot your paintbrushes. You do have these amazing original paintbrushes. These are the original paintbrushes. They were established and patented, they say about 30 to 40,000 years ago. The oldest evidence of finger painting on cave walls by some, uh, by some cavemen in uh, Lascaux Caves in France. I didn't make that up. Good story. Or I didn't like that. So I'm gonna cover back up. Yellow just doesn't make sense in my composition. Tried it out, didn't like it. That's a conversation I had intuitively. The goal here is once you think you're done, you're not done. Um, the goal here is, is basic. We have three main targets. Number one, layers. The first watercolor layer where I was just playing with my watercolor tray, that was layer one with the pencil. I would count that as layer one. The next step is when I started adding some of like the oranges and acrylic paints, that was layer two. When I white it out and I obliterated part of my painting, a third of my painting, that was layer three and so on and so forth. What I need you and expect you to do is layer one, layer two, layers, three layers, four layers, five layers, six, seven, eight, nine, roughly about nine or 10 layers minimum. Um, the way you know you're done is if it feels right. Right now, oh dang, I kind of like it better upside down. So what I'm doing is just checking for composition to see how it looks. Kind of reminds me of a spray can. Eventually, you may want to incorporate some imagery in there, but I wouldn't do that until roughly around now, layer uh, five, six, seven, when you really kind of created this multi-layered background. So goal one is working with layers. So every coat of activity that you create is one layer. The next coat of paint is layer two. Next coat of paint after that is layer three. Um, don't just consider one line like this. Oh, that was layer one. That's not enough. You wanna, you wanna create a viscous surface. All right, so layer one, layering is number one for gold. Goal two, goal two is to forget everything you thought about art as being art. You know, like a lot of people really do feel like the only way to be an artist is to be able to draw that character that's not a stick figure, right? Oh, I can't, I can't, I do art. I can't, I can barely draw a stick figure. That's the biggest lie and the silliest thing that's ever been said and repeated throughout history. Um, all right, your third and final goal is to forget that that finished art piece in a gallery, coffee shop, or museum is what art is all about. Art is actually about the process, about engaging in something like this and figuring things out. Not so, necessarily, so much necessarily on the end product that everyone sees and, and you hear someone buying, right? Um, a common story goes like this. Jean-Michel Basquiat was sitting at a coffee shop. And he's right there drawing and drawing and and someone sits down in front of him. It might have been a bar, but it doesn't matter the location. He's sitting there and he draws this person. And the person looks at, at his drawing and he goes, I really like your drawing. How much do you want for it? And Basquiat says, I want you know, 500 bucks for this little drawing. So the person sitting there is like, man, Basquiat, like, it, took you, it took you like five minutes to draw that. How could you possibly, it's, it's absurd that you want $500 for it. Basquiat said, this didn't take me five minutes. This took me a lifetime to draw. So I think that's what you want to think about is, is that the hours, the, the, the amount of time that you put into something, that's what you get out of it. And Basquiat didn't just spend five minutes on a drawing. He spent years and years looking at artwork in different art books. He spent years looking at uh, Grey's Anatomy, the book on anatomy, to learn everything about the human body. He spent years copying Andy Warhol and all these other artists that were in his vicinity, in his community, because he wanted to be not only like them, but better than them. He spent years drawing every painting that he painted, every sculpture that he sculpted, 
every doodle that he doodled went into that five minute drawing. And so that's where we're at. We're, we're this is far more valuable than the finished piece. All right, so that's what I want you to do and we'll carry on and we'll continue this, this project here and I'll show you more as it develops, but um, good luck and have fun. Nine to 10 layers, that's what I'm asking for. Um, let's see, let's see where it's at after about an hour's worth of work. Good luck.